<clears throat> hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm gonna see. I'm trying to see if I'm doing this right. Come on in the room. I said, come on in the room. Jesus, he's my doctor, and he writes all of my scripture, and he gives me all of my medicine in the room. Hey, 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 blessings, uh, Prophet Bianca, how are you? Long time. Hey, Prophet T. Come on in the room. I said, come on in the room. Jesus is my doctor, and he writes all of my scriptures. Can you hear me? And he's giving me all of my medicine in the room. Ooh, come on in the room. I said, come on in the room. Hey, Jesus is my doctor and he writes all of my scriptures and he Gives me all my medicine in the room. Ooh. Oh, come on in the room. I want to share something that the Lord gave me. Come on in the room. Oh, Jesus is my doctor. And he writes all of my scripture. It'll be real fast, but I want to give it. Gives me all of my medicine in the room. Listen, y'all, I don't need no, ooh, if I get an organ and a tamarind, I'm going to really shout. i tear this truck up. <laughs> ah, praise God. Prophet Brian. Amen. Um, I'm going to share something that's been on my heart for a couple of days. And um, I want to just share it. Um, and I think um, I am also want to share because I, I miss the prophets. Um, I'm getting ready. We're getting ready for conclave. And so um, I haven't been able to really um, kind of focus in on the space where we can talk to the prophets um which is it's it's good though it's good because um uh, we got to get ready for um conclave it's going to be absolutely amazing um it's an amazing meeting um there's portions of it that's private and then there's portions that are open and um it's it's super amazing what we're going to do is almost unheard of and um I'm grateful and excited that God is allowed us to do it um i have to preach i have to preach on sunday in denver and hey blessings apostle oh that's my brother um i want to um for those who are in denver come join me sunday i'll be at miracle mountain um and if you know me you should probably know prophet brianna um but she'll have information. Um, bless you, Prophet. Prophet Darius, amen, bless you. Um, he'll do it. And so, but I want to preach. Oh, um, I'm going to preach Sunday. Uh, thank you, Apostle. Um, but we're going to, um, I want to share what God wants me to share this morning. Um, and um, I feel like I can't see this phone so well. Um, but I do want to share um, something that the Lord has given me um, for the people of God. So, um, you know, of course, we all know we've kind of been living in a very um, interesting place and time. And 
it's odd because it literally is the best of times and the worst of times at the same time. And God is covering and he's blessing and he's uplifting his people during this time. Um, great promotions are happening. Um, great increases are happening and taking place. And um, the world seems as if it is um, kind of going in the opposite direction. And some of the people of God seem to um, almost be nervous or I don't want to call it nervous, but have been reluctant to actually um, rejoice in this space because it seems as if the world isn't. And God has really given us great things and he's doing great things. And so we almost kind of have been trying to downplay the goodness of the Lord because we almost don't want to offend somebody else. And some of us have downplayed the goodness of the Lord because um, we know and we're aware that some folks don't believe that we deserve it. Some folks don't believe that we should have it. Um, and some of us have been downplaying it because we ourselves don't have the level of confidence to believe that we deserve it also. And so it puts us in this awkward bind, this paradoxical space where you're happy, but you know that everyone won't be happy for you. And so um, what they've been posting all over and what the world has come to is they taught us to do things in secret or to move quietly and in secret. Well, the reason why some folks um, choose or deem to move in silence is because of fear. And it isn't um, them choosing to do it or move in silence because of a choice, but they do it because of fear. And um, some do it because the fear of failure and because they have experienced public failures. Um, some have um, decided to do it because they have experience um, not only failure but just disappointment they've they've experienced all these other um, what I like to call byproducts of success because you'll never actually have um, proper success until you've had a proper failure um, I, I guess this might not be so good for people um, y'all let me know if this is helping a little um so what tends to happen um, is that when God decides to start to elevate and to um, cause us to be lifted and to grow, um, we have to deal with our insecurities. And when we have to start dealing with our insecurities, we then have to realize that grace is the reason why we are what we are, who we are, that grace has done an amazing job with us. And people want you to uh, not give grace the credit that grace deserves for doing what grace did with you. And so there's a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. And I'm going to read it in the NIV, the New International Version. It says, but by the grace of God, I am who I am. And his grace was not without effect. And it says, no, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was within me. And so here the apostle was saying, you know, he said, you know, I may literally in verse nine, he says, I, I probably I'm the least likely to uh, least likely um, 
the least likely to be worthy to be called an apostle. And he said, and the reason why is because when I came in, I came in prosecuting or persecuting um, that which I should have been uplifting. And so, you know, the most generic answer for what an apostle is, um, it says that they are foundational, they build. And so he literally was a persecutor of the church. And so he literally um, went exactly against the apostolic call on his life. That he was a destroyer of the foundation. But... God then changed his life and caused him no longer to be a destroyer, but to be a builder. And so it looked funny because he went from one extreme to another extreme. Um, some would have called him bipolar, that he went from one polar extreme to another polar extreme. And so people didn't believe that God had really did a work on him and couldn't believe that he was taking this space because of what he used to do. God is, I don't know who this is for, but God is really pushing for you and he has placed you in the place that no one else thought that you would ever be because it's the exact opposite of what you intended and what others might have expected of you. Yeah, that God is placing you in a space that is totally opposite than where you expected to be and where others expected you to be. That they expected you to be in a place um, that a place where grace had no work in you. And so the apostle was saying, but I am an apostle and I am an apostle because of the grace of God. I'm not where I am because I deserved it. And yes, I've worked hard. I've worked very hard. I've worked harder than all the others, he said. He said, but it wasn't me working. It was grace working in me to position me and to cause this metamorphosis that has taken place in my life. Oh, Jesus. He was saying that I would have never made it here on my own, but I'm here. And so he was literally saying that I don't deserve it, but grace had an effective work in my life. That grace did what I didn't know can happen. Grace did what no one else expected to happen. Grace has such a found impact on my life that grace molded me into what God knew was going to be my destiny. Oh, Jesus. I said that grace formed me into what God knew was going to be my destiny. And so he, 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 he had to come to an a understanding. Of, uh, he had to come to an understanding where he did not take just credit for grace. And grace had to be something bigger than an excuse or a way out of sin. Mm. That grace had to be a transformational power of God that can cause one to move out of a place of distress into a place of destiny. He had to realize that grace had the power to, 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 to change his mind, to change his heart, to change his actions, to change his way of living. He realized that grace became his default defining the a defining agent to push him into destiny. And so he had to kind of say to the others, um, I know I don't deserve to be here, 
but I'm here because grace said so. Oh, Jesus. Um, he had to say to others, I know I don't deserve the level of success that God has released into me, but I am successful because grace, oh God, placed me in a successful place. He had to come to a place where he began to just realize that I can't keep hiding um, what grace has done for me. I can't keep hiding what grace has done for me because you don't feel that I'm worthy. I can't keep hiding what grace has done for me because you don't feel that I deserve it. I can't keep hiding what grace has done for me because you don't agree with what grace has done. Grace and the work of grace was not in vain. And the sad truth is, I know everyone isn't happy about it, but I'm happy that God and that grace has done a great job with me. Oh, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. There's promotions that we, we were even afraid to tell people because, oh, God, thank you, Jesus, because folks make us feel bad that grace has done a good job. Grace has done an amazing job with us. Grace has done, oh, oh God, let me, let me, uh, uh, okay. Y'all hear me. Jesus. Grace. Oh, look at that. <laughs> my look at my car even knows that I'm 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 shouting. Can you still hear me? <laughs> ah Jesus. It's even excited for me. It's even excited for me. Can you all still hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Amen. Okay, you can can you still hear me? Okay. Woo, Jesus. I'm trying not to shout. So you ready? What God is doing for you in this season is the result of grace and the result of the work of grace and not the result of man's election is not the result of your own actions and your own efforts but this is the result of the efforts the successful efforts of grace and i don't want you to no longer downplay who you are because when you downplay who you are you're saying to grace that you made the wrong decision. You're saying to grace that grace's work wasn't effective. You're saying to grace that grace's, the grace on your life was in vain. This proves that the grace of God on your life is not in vain. It is your promotion. Your promotion proves to the enemy that there's a grace on you. Your promotion, your ranking, your weight proves to the enemy that you are a product of grace. It proves to your family that you're a product of grace. It proves to the naysayers that you are a product of grace. And I need for you to no longer hide behind the shame of your past, the shame of your mistakes, the shame of, of where you've come from. Don't you dare be ashamed of where you come from, but because of grace, you can wear um, your past as a, a badge of honor 
Why? Because it shows how big and how heavy grace was on your life. Don't be ashamed that you, you used to be no good. Um, because now God has transformed you into good. Oh, I wish y'all, I know y'all hear me. I, whoo, Jesus, the grace of God on your life is proving to people that grace works. It's proving to people that God works and God was aware of where he found you when he found you. Oh, Jesus. Uh, 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 folks act like God was shocked. God wasn't shocked. He knew where you were when he found you. He knew the position you were in. He knew the state you were in. He knew that you was no good. He knew that you weren't worthy. He knew that you, you weren't the best person. He knew you loved to fight. He knew that you loved to cuss people out. He knew that you was fast. But God's grace on your life has changed you from being a, uh, a persecutor into being an establisher. It has changed you from being a destroyer into being a developer. The grace has changed you. The grace has initiated a mortar. It caused a a metamorphosis in your life because of grace you can say i am not what i used to be it's because of grace you can say that yes i know i was no good at one point oh but because of grace's goodness i'm good do you hear me and he says i am who i am because of the grace of God. It says, and the grace of God um, was not in vain. I need you, and I don't know why I feel so much pressure this morning. But I need you to stop hiding what grace has done with you. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Somebody... The world needs to see what grace has done with you. The other apostles need to see what grace has done with you. The other prophets need to see what grace has done with you. The other folks in your neighborhood need to see what grace has done with you. The folks you grew up with need to see what grace has done with you. Your family needs to see what grace has done with you. Your job needs to see what grace has done with you. Listen. God is placing us in places that we didn't work for, but he's placing us in places that grace has worked for. Oh, I just said something. He's not placing us in places we work for. He placed us in places that grace has reserved for us. <laughs> grace has already made your reservations. Oh, Jesus. Grace. Grace has already made your reservations. Grace has. Grace has. Grace has already done it. That's right, Prophet Brianna. Grace did it. Grace has. Pastor Melissa, don't make me shout. Grace has done a good job with you. And I don't want you to be ashamed of the job that Grace has done with you. Mm -mm. I don't want you to be ashamed of the, the grace that's on your life. Yes, you are an apostle. Yes, you are a prophet. Yes, you are an evangelist. Yes, you are a pastor and teacher. Yes, you are a multimillionaire. Yes, you are a multi-billionaire. Yes, you are a mogul. 
Yes, you are a business owner. Yes, you are an executive. Yes, you are an elected official. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are a homeowner. Yes, you are. Yes, 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 you don't deserve it. But listen, let me tell you this. And I just heard this in my spirit. Grace has literally co-signed where your credit won't allow you to. Okay, Jesus. Grace is your co-signer. You'll get it on the credit of grace. <laughs> it don't matter what your credit was. Oh, Jesus. Grace. Grace said, I'll co-sign. I'll co-sign so you can have it. So you can obtain it. And so let me give this, and this is a prophetic word. This is a prophetic word that... And this is a prophetic word. I'm going to release this. Oh, God. This is a prophetic word. I'm going to release this. You ready? God is positioning you in spaces which never seen you coming. God is going to cause this season to change. And while the world is scraping to hold things together... And scraping to pull things together. God is going to name this season the season of acquisition for you. This is the season of acquisition. This is the season of acquisition. This is the season in which you will acquire the things that God has already predestined. That you acquire things that you on your own should not deserve. This is going to be the season of acquisition. See, I hope you understand prophecy. Um, this, this is huge. I hear it, God. This is the season of acquisition and that God is going to cause you to acquire more in this season, more than you've ever had before, more than you need. He's going to cause this to be the season of acquisition. And the reason why God is trying to make you get rid of some old stuff is because God needs for you to make room for the new stuff. You are going to have to acquire things in this season and you're going to acquire things with grace's credit hear what i'm saying that means you're going to acquire things that you would have never been able to acquire on your own and you'll never be able to acquire based on your past but god is causing this season name for the believer and those who believe what i'm saying they're going to call this season the season of acquisition i just heard it I just heard it. He said, I'm going to cause him to acquire all kinds of things. He said, property. Yes, God. Yes, yes, God. Property. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Businesses. Yes, God. Yeah, yeah. Stocks. Mm -hmm. Mutual funds. Yeah. This is the season. This is that season. Let the word, the world can lose but listen, it's in the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. That means somebody got to lose in order for you to win. I'm telling you, somebody is going to lose, but you're not it. You're going to acquire. It's a season of acquisition. I hear it. I'm sorry, I'm trying to let this go. I got to go. But I hear it loud and clear. Acquisition. This is the reason. It's, it's the season of to acquire. See, that's what harvest is. Harvest is the time in which you acquire based off of your investment. A.K.A. based off your seed. Listen. That's, I, that's what I love about Sears House. I love Supernatural because they, they, Sears House know how to give, and, and it's, it's amazing. I never have to talk about giving. They know how to give. Um, I don't even talk to them about it. Um, and they know how to give. They know how to sow. Why? Um, because God has placed in them 
the spiritual soundness to know how to acquire. Oh, Jesus. I'm telling you, this season is called acquisition. And so, don't you dare let the devil make you be ashamed of what you are going to and what you are acquiring. Don't let the devil make you be ashamed because you're being promoted. I, I don't want to prophesy to people individually, but uh, prophetess um, uh, Tanya, don't let the devil make you be ashamed because you're a true prophet and that there's a great anointing on your life trying to make you retire. You can't retire ministry. You can't retire. Just because they, they won't out don't mean it's for you to get out. Oh, I, I'm, I don't mean to prophesy directly like that. But do you hear me? This, I don't want you to be ashamed. Melissa, Pastor Melissa, I don't want you to be ashamed of what God is doing in your life. And he's moving fast, way faster than they, they realize. Don't you, don't you allow them to make you feel um, you don't deserve it. Pastor James, don't you allow them to make you feel you don't deserve what God's going to do because it's un, unorthodox, it's, it's, it's unusual, unheard of. Yeah. Don't you, don't you allow them to make you feel like uh, you don't deserve what God is about to do? Are you kidding me? Mm -mm. We, we get excited. I see people post about all kind of little stuff. And I see the world, they love to um, brag about what's happening. Hey, but guess what? I want us to start bragging on what grace has done. What grace has done? What grace has done? What grace has done in us? And so the brag won't be about us, but about how, what grace has done. Do you understand me? About what grace has done. Good morning, Shay, my favorite. What grace has done? Prophet Brianna, about what grace has done. Yes, grace saved my life. And you know what? I'm going to add to that. Grace saved my life by giving me a life. <laughs> I wasn't living before grace. I wasn't living before grace. All right, I'm done. I hope this helps somebody. Um... I just want to be a blessing. I love you all so, so much. And I really, I really, really do. And I just ask God, when God gives me a word for the people, I, I just release it. Um, I just release it when he gives it to me. Don't forget, this season is called acquisition. No losing. Mm -mm, not right now. This is about what you're going to acquire. And let me say this. You're going to acquire it not based on your work, but based on God's work. Who I just, I just seen relocation. I just see the word relocation just popping right in front of my face. It's going to happen. Oh, God. It's going to happen. Oh, God. Y'all, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to let this go. But it's going to happen. Based off of grace's credit. Love you, cousin Pat. Based off of grace's credit. Based off of grace's grace, grace's credit. He, glory to God. Grace is going to cause you to move into new dimensions. Grace is going to cause you to move into new times. 
Grace is going to cause you to experience new horizons. Grace is going to cause you to experience supernatural transformational experiences. Grace is going to cause you to tap into miracles. Grace is going to cause you to experience miracles. Grace is going to cause you to experience signs and wonders. Grace is going to cause you to experience the, the power and the movement of God. God is about to show you how dope and how, how big and how supernatural grace is. Grace is supernatural. And we can't keep letting people lie to us and tell us that grace is just an excuse for sin. No, baby, grace has produced my destiny. <laughs> grace is the executive producer of my destiny. <laughs> oh, oh, grace. Oh, for grace, grace, grace. Grace has done a good job. It's done a good job with you. I don't want you to keep downplaying how good grace has been to you. I extend to you the grace of God. The grace to become. <laughs> I'm trying to stop. But I, I just heard that. The grace to become. There's a grace to become. And right now there's a grace to become. What God has predestined for you to become. There's a grace for it. There's a grace to become. You're not stuck. No, 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 no. You're not stuck. You're not stuck. You're not stuck. You're not stuck in pain. You're not stuck in bitterness. You're not stuck in misery. You're not stuck in sadness. You're not stuck in anger. Mm -hmm. There's a grace to become. All right, I love you. I hope you share this with somebody who needs it. I love you all so much. And I want to I wanna start seeing us talk about what grace has done. What grace is done. All right, I love you. God bless you. Bye.